Hello and welcome to the May Garden Tour. Starting out in the front yard here to show you some of the beautiful tulips and the bleeding hearts that are in bloom right now. And I have a purple sun cherry also blooming. The front here is not finished. I have my hanging basket up. I painted the hanger and I have that assembled. I have the two urns done up here and down here. And then I have all these little blue pots that I'm going to be filling with succulents. So stay tuned for June and you'll be able to see those. I am going to be showing you mainly the backyard today because it is absolutely stunning. There's so many things in bloom that you just need to see it. Uh, you can see I still have yet to actually trim my clematis and there's more pots that need to be filled down here. So I'm going to just walk with the camera and I'm going to show you the backyard. Still have that sink here for those who have been following. Waiting for my husband to take that to a restore. I think it's almost like a standoff. Um, you can see here that the peonies are growing quite nicely and I have trimming and everything to do here in the front. I'm very, very behind. And I'm going to show you another project that we're working on before I reveal the gloriousness that's sitting in the backyard. So the whole side of the house here, I still have to work on it. I still have like the power washer sitting here and this whole part still is to be done uh, with all sorts of succulent arrangements. I'm really excited about doing that. My sister gave me this archway and it blew over in the wind the other day and broke, which my husband has uh, replaced the board up at the top. And uh, we just have to agree on exactly where it's going to sit here on the edge of the garden walking into the backyard. We used to have a different one here with two little gates and the gates have been repurposed in another project, but the rest of it rested away. So I really do like this. I like the way it sort of frames you into the backyard here. I'm thinking I may even stain it a dark color, but I'm not sure. So we still have lots of weeding to do along here. We've done some, there's still a lot to do. But, okay, you ready for the reveal? This is pretty spectacular. We have right in front of you that beautiful pink tree. That is a lavender twist red bud. And it is glorious. It has beautiful heart-shaped leaves that will come out after the beautiful pink flowers, but it's just beautiful. And we have all of these stunning tulips that we planted last fall, and I cannot believe how wonderful they have turned out. I'll show you a close-up. And then you can see the pots still have all the yellow pansies that we put in, and we have so many flowers in the tree. We have a crab apple here. We have an apple tree there and another apple tree there. I'll try to see if I can insert some of the magnolias that were in bloom. But for now, let's try to focus on what we see in front of us in this tour. So this right here is a dogwood and it will give us blooms, but not yet. And it did not bloom for us last year. So we're really hopeful that this year it will perform like it should. The little flowers that you're seeing here, the white ones, those are sweet woodruff. They smell beautiful. And if you saw the videos from last year, you will recall that there wasn't a lot here because this entire garden that you see in front of you is brand new. So it hasn't even experienced a full year yet. It was planted last June. And we had a huge English walnut here that was about 50 years old that fell down last April, so a year ago, and uh, it had to be removed. It split right in half. We were very lucky that there was minimal damage, like a dollar's worth of damage to a piece of the fence. Uh, and other than that, no damage, just uh, the damage to our pocketbook, so to speak. Look at these beautiful double tulips. And let me just come around to the other side so you can see these yellow tulips because they actually have like a double head or a triple head on each one of the blooms. I've never seen that before. It's just so beautiful. It's actually been warm here for the last uh, 24 hours at about mm, 22 degrees, which feels really warm after our single digit 
spring so far so uh, the tulips finally are maturing and coloring and going far too quickly this is our red bud you can see the flowers a little closer and I will just step back so you can see how it cascades down it's got like a weeping branch this gets about 10 feet tall the dogwood will get about 15 feet tall this beautiful pine that you see right here uh, this one right here the umbrella I think it's called an umbrella tree pine it gets about 30 feet tall and 18 feet wide and this is an ivory silk uh, lilac tree I was told in a garden tour that they only bloom every two years and I would like to show you after it bloomed last year successfully for me look at that right there that's a bloom so I don't know why that woman's uh, tree only blooms every two years this particular one is gonna give me another show this year look there's even more blooms there it's very very florific so I'm really looking forward to that and it's really nice to know that there's a timing of all of the blooms here those are the gates that used to be on the side I have spray painted them black they were black before but they were dull and kind of rusty so I've sort of saved them right in front of them are, let me see if I can walk over the, the plants without stepping on anything so I can show you a little closer these are an ever-bearing lilac so that's actually gonna go right from now into I believe September October with the blooms so I'm really looking forward to that working out just quite lovely and you can see we planted all sorts of hostas in here look at the beautiful shape of those needles Here's the tulips up close again. This is a slightly different color combination. No yellow uh, tulips here. It's uh, more of a pink with a yellow inside and a purple with a nice fringed edge. Look at that. Love those flowers when it does that. But interestingly enough, right at my feet is another patch of flowers and they didn't come up at all. So I don't know why that happens, but apparently tulips do that. This is a golden globe cedar, and I love the tips in the spring, how they come out, that beautiful yellow color. It just really makes an arrangement look really pretty. You can see that we have more of the, sorry. This is more of the sweet woodruff. And over here, this is a euphorbia. You can see there's one right here with the dark colored leaves right beside it with the silver furry leaves that's called lamb's ears and then over to the far right is another type of euphorbia uh, with the sweet woodruff it's a very very pretty combination let me just pull back here so you can see how this garden looks from this angle so you can see that beautiful red bud one more time beautiful I'm gonna turn the camera try to do it slowly uh, coming up on your right is my rhubarb and this is the first time I have ever seen it flower and I've looked it up and apparently I need to cut those flower stalks off because they drain all of the energy from the rhubarb plant so that will be a task today that I will be working on just to make sure that it's uh, cleaned up our magnolia tree we had to cut out a third of it in the middle because there was a branch that was dead and beautifully those branches were used by a master floral designer here from Japan teaching an Ikebama class and he used it in a grand presentation all of the leaves or all of the branches so that was pretty spectacular to see it have a second use Here's the feature pot that you see from the deck and I'll back up in a second so you can see what this looks like from that vantage point. I've planted lots of new things in here. I have our proven winners 
petunias. I've used the Vista variety. I have uh, really just two colors here. I have the Bordeaux, which I love, and the Mini Silver. Uh, they're purples and they're gonna go really nice with these other daisies that I have here. That pink one is, I believe, uh, a Gerber daisy. And I'm not sure if the other ones are Gerber daisies, like a different variety too. I've never grown them, so curious how they're gonna work out. The middle arrangement that you see there is a Mandevilla, and I'm hoping it's the pink one, because that's what I thought I bought, but I noticed that one of the white ones that I bought had pink flowers. So hopeful that this is going to be pink. It looks like over here, that looks like a pink flower. And then down at the bottom, last fall, I planted in a whole bunch of, of these boxwoods that I got on sale and I've trimmed them up so they're a little tidier and they'll broaden out. And I've also put some sweet alyssum, just like the four cell pack type. Uh, it's not a special variety. Uh, but it smells beautifully and then on either side of them you can see it right here and here I've done an English lavender so if it, English lavender is actually a herb that you can use in culinary purposes so I do try to make sure if I'm growing lavender that it is the type that you can use uh, beyond just for a visual uh, aspect in my garden I have some beautiful lavender right here I'm just gonna move the camera you can see there's a lavender in these pots here and that is called Spanish lavender. I have no idea whether it's culinary approved, but it's gorgeous. Let me back up so you can see that. So I cleaned that whole gate up. I spray painted it. I still have a little bit of uh, the sticker left on that pot and I got to figure out how to get that out. Uh, and you can see over to the left, we have another purple sand cherry and it's in bloom right now. And then over here, I have painted the pink set once again. Every couple of years, it needs a nice redo. And I've changed up the pots this year. It was a darker blue, more of a deep ocean or cobalt blue before. And I'm really liking this uh, shade that we've picked here. Uh, looking up at the deck, you can see that the pots also are all beautifully done. There's yellow pansies and violas in them right now. Those will be taken out in the next month and the Vista uh, Bordeaux as well as I believe I have a Vista Bubblegum and a Vista Mini Silver in each of those pots will really take over and I also still have to plant in a bunch of the creeping jenny that will cascade down the sides. There's just not a lot of room right now. So that's uh, next up on my to-do list. And you can see here that this garden has also come back quite beautifully. The hostas are really enjoying the sun. Interesting little factoid, most of the time with hostas, we grow them in shady conditions. I did learn on a couple of garden tours that there are some hostas that prefer to have a lot more sun. For instance, this big one right here with the bluish leaves, those prefer to have more sun conditions than shade and they will be massive this year. I can already see how much bigger they are than in previous years. And these ones over here, I actually thought they were gonna die off and they were already twice the size that they have been in previous years. So I'm quite excited to see how this garden is going to change with these hostas that typically we all think need a lot of sun. Apparently the ones that have white leaves prefer more of the shade. It's pretty colors. And let me just show you this beautiful dogwood here can see every day I'm coming and I'm looking at the flowers and they change colors. It was like the color of the leaf before and it's pinking up a little bit more and it's going to be this beautiful pink color and then it'll go more chartreuse. You can see here there's a slightly different color on that one. And then let me just move the camera up so you can see all the blooms in the crab apple. 
We thought we were going to lose this crab apple because half of it was dead once the English walnut left. It kind of got burnt by the sun. It just wasn't used to having that much sun. And you can see that there's a lot of new growth. Um, some people said that those are just going to be suckers and that we should just cut them off. But some of them that came out of suckers also have blooms on them. So we have to figure out which ones we're going to cut off. But we want the tree to grow this way. So uh, we're really happy to even have suckers to fill up that side. Uh, usually I believe a sucker is the ones that are more straight and the ones that have more berries on them uh, are the ones that have uh, sort of strange angles to them. But again, we want the tree to grow out this way. Let me just turn the camera again so you can just get another view. So I've done a lot of cleanup here on the garden area. Uh, in previous years, I've actually allowed the lamb's ears to grow into all of the stone. And while it was very pretty, it also left it very messy looking and also very hard to walk around. So I've actually come and lifted up all of the stones. I dug them all out and have lifted them up and made the pathway a little bit bigger. And I've weeded all this area. So uh, it's been a lot of lot of work. Oh. Uh, I will come up to the deck right at the end so you can see what it looks like uh, from that vantage point. The lilac tree here was spe not the lilac, apologies. The magnolia tree was spectacular this year. Uh, it was earlier than normal because it has more sun and it usually is around the same time that all these other trees are in bloom. So it was actually really nice to have it to be blooming first uh, rather than everything all at once. So I've just picked up these pretty little balls here and I'm going to fill them with these beautiful twinkle lights that run on batteries and they're made for the outdoors. I think they're going to look just beautiful. Um, we have a shower here and a rehearsal wedding party uh, here. So trying to figure out all the different things we can do to make this a magical space for those days. The got lots of new things that I'm working on. Here's the blue pots that used to be on that white gate that you just saw. So I really do like them over here. It's a little bit darker. It works better with these uh, green chairs that we're debating whether we're going to keep or not. Obviously I still have all of those cookies that are still sitting there from our uh, walnut tree that fell. We have a sanding party coming up where we're going to be sanding them and getting them all ready for the wedding. I know it seems like a little bit weird because most people have the plain circle ones. Uh, I'm not sure if everybody's going to love these, but I do think they're going to make really beautiful arrangements that are going to have a really beautiful woodsy look. Just wait and see. I'll show you what they're going to look like when we get them all done. They're going to look beautiful. And you can see here we have a bunch of small ones too. Those can also be used to have like candles on them and they are going to be quite spectacular. Here's those balls. They're going to look so good. And this weekend, Friday, I edged all of the gardens here. It was the first day uh, that the ground was even dry enough. And then Saturday we had an intense rainstorm where you could walk on the grass and it sort of slushed under your feet so I'm glad I got that done uh, on Friday there's that beautiful new archway with the lighter blue really do like the way that it's come together and I love those lavender standards this garden that you're seeing right in front of you that was our Friday's work it was actually the last couple of weeks worth of work for me but the planting of it and taking out the old plants uh, was Friday and uh, it was an intense amount of work. I removed a big clump of irises and we've divided them and made them go across the whole garden. I removed some tiger lilies from another spot that I'll show you in a second and we've put them here because there wasn't enough sun in the other spot so hopefully these will bloom. And we put in a bunch of peonies so I'll just walk over and show you in a second. Uh, they were from my mother-in-law's garden and we had them in another spot and there hasn't been any flowers on them so we're hopeful that this spot will give them some uh, better lighting conditions and also allow them to light. We also took out all of the lamb's ears that was along the front edge. The grass had just 
filled in and we also had a lot of snails that came in and just uh, rampaged them so we just used the best ones and you can see on the sorry on the left those are the ones I didn't take out and on the right those are the ones that did come out and with all of the intense rain that we've had and there's another storm coming tonight that type of condition is working really nicely for any sort of transplant. So I'll show you another project that I'm about to do in a, an hour from now so I can take advantage of the heavy rains that are coming. And just turning the camera a little bit over here, you can see I have more lamb's ears here and there is all sorts of uh, euphorbia and grass that's in that area. So that has to all be weeded as well. So let me just uh, walk up to this so you can see. There's like four different types of peonies. And this one actually has blooms for the first time. And some of the other ones look like they're struggling. You can see the leaves have uh, sort of turned over a bit and I'm hopeful that this is a happy home for them. And I'm not sure what color all these irises are going to be. Every year it seems like they're a little different, but they're like a, a dark purple, uh, almost black some of them, and some of them are dark purple. So I'm really going to uh, love watching them come out. Let me just show you one other type of euphorbia that also plants itself here. This is another euphorbia. I love these dark leaves and the contrast with that uh, euonymus the yellow leaves coming out. I'm not sure what this plant is called here with these beautiful sort of furnished looking leaves, but it gets these beautiful white flowers that smell like vanilla and it comes back every year. This whole garden here is going to get a little bit of a makeover. All the lavender that you see in the front here has died. Uh, it just got too woody. So I've got a tray that I am going to be putting in there and giving it some fresh look. All of the boxwoods are going to get a major trimming and there's more of the purple sand cherry. Over here in our covered area we lost a lot of our shade now that we lost that English walnut tree so we're finding that we're very very grateful for the shaded area. Here's another arrangement that I've got going. This one is the same one that I had on my deck last year, which is the uh, Proven Winters Fuchsia. It's a Vista Fuchsia, and then I have the Vista Bubblegum. So it's going to be beautiful, and I have a white Mandevilla. These are actually dogwood branches from another property that I had uh, in winter arrangements that have actually started to grow. So going to see if I can get some trees. <laughs> and here's the project that is going to be done. So in the June video, you should be able to come back and see how it looks. Um, we moved our compost, which was right there, and we've moved it over here. So you can't smell it as much when you're sitting on the deck. And I actually got around to cleaning out our little dry river. Uh, it's had these big wooden pieces, it had all the leaves, it had all of these hostas that we're going to plant. So it's the first time it's been cleaned up since last fall. And it looks so good, it's so nice to see it back. And we emptied the compost into this area here and I'm just letting it settle out for a little bit. And this is where all of the hostas that used to be under that big English walnut, this is where they're going to sit. And this is, I'm hoping, are more varieties that do better in the shade. You can still see it gets a, a, some sun. It's not like intense shade, but it will not be uh, an inda sorry, it's not an ideal environment for the tiger lilies that used to be here. When the trees were smaller, they used to bloom, but last year I didn't get any bloom. So the hostas are gonna have a nice life sitting here and it's gonna be much prettier to actually look at when you're here on the deck. The Euonymus are doing really well this year. We actually had some sort of blight that killed a lot of them off. And I thought I'd lost all of the ones I had planted, but it's really nice to see them. This is a nine bark. Some people have tremendous success with them. I haven't seen a lot of success with this one. Uh, it's bloomed once for me. We'll see what it does this year. This is a starburst honey locust. 
and it will be all yellow. And I got it so that it contrasted with this beautiful miniature blue spruce, which isn't really so miniature, <laughs> but it's not gonna grow to 75 uh, feet like a blue uh, Colorado. Uh, but this one should be getting close to its full size, I really hope. And you can see I also have a Japanese maple over there as well. Right down here is a Korean lilac. They have a spectacular smell. I've seen them on a lot of garden tours at, in the end of June. And it's just one of those plants that you go, I must have one of those. So I planted one on this side of my garden. And I'm just gonna move the camera. And I planted one on that side of my garden. And you can see how much bigger that one is. So that one gets more shade, um, but it ha and so it's bigger, but it also has less flowers. I used to have the other twin sister to that purple sand cherry standard. And it was sort of like designed so that each side of this uh, back deck had a purple sand cherry and then the Korean lilac, but that one died. There's just too much competition going on. Uh, the trees that you see here uh, is a white pine that grew from a little itty bitty Mother's Day gift that we forgot about until one day we looked out and saw that it was four feet tall. The big tree that you also see here is a oak tree. And it must have grown from a little acorn because we did not plant that. But a good mother oak is beautiful to have. So we're gonna just let it happen and we're gonna see who wins out this big tree fight. Uh, the little um, Japanese maple loves this type of conditions with overstory trees. And back there, that's a Rose of Sharon or hibiscus. And you can see that it actually, the seeds come off of it and it has a ton of little trees here. So I'm gonna be digging those up for my sister when she comes. And this right here is a service berry or a Saskatoon berry if you live out west. Right here is going to be more succulent arrangements. I'm gonna fill in this really interesting trunk with some beautiful succulents. And back there is a white lilac but look up and check out the beauty of this apple tree. There are so many birds coming to enjoy this. We saw hummingbirds, we've seen finches, we've seen a Baltimore Oriole, and it's like it's just snowing the blossoms. So I wanted to capture it today before this rainstorm came because it may not be here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm hoping you can see the flowers that are all from both trees here, both the apple tree and the crab apple tree. And I'm just gonna spin the camera a little bit more for you so you can see all of those blossoms. And then, sorry, I'm gonna spin it a little faster here. So you can see all of the blossoms that are also on this other apple tree. It's not the same type of apple tree because if you notice each one of those blossoms almost seems to be like in its own little cluster. Uh, I might, it might be a spy. We've never been able to figure out what type of apple that is. This seems to be like an early Mac. It's a very early tree. Let's see if I can focus in on one for you. There we go. And to just lie in the hammock and to look up at that it's really quite incredible. Don't those look good? I know my husband's gonna think I'm crazy, but I think they're gonna look really good. So over here, underneath this tree, we have a couple of plants. So this is a vinca, and in some places it's considered a noxious weed. So I do try to make sure that I control it. And within it, I do have some, hmm, can't remember what they're called. Just little wild violets that grow. I don't know what the official name is, but they're really quite pretty. And here 
These are columbines and they self seed. You can see they're all over the place. All in the back here, this is a scented geranium. It keeps the mosquitoes away and it really likes it being here under this um, hippocastanea or horse chestnut tree. It, it is a particularly dry growing area, but it works really well for this particular species. And then right here, apart from my outstanding garbage can in the middle of the walkway, I have a archway that I have painted and I put in some new pots and these new painted obelisks so that it gives us a more formal approach to our work area. So this is where we store a lot of our tools. We still try to make it look good. So I'm gonna try to walk around this garbage can. And this year, um, I'm debating whether I'm going to do all the vegetables that I usually do in this quarter. I may just leave it more simple and flowers. I find then I don't go to the farmer's market and buy all of the tomatoes. It's a lot easier to go buy them. <laughs> And I have all the pots set up. We've got one tomato. I'm gonna to go buy a couple of cherries. So we'll, we'll have a couple of cherry tomatoes or a tiny Tim's, but we won't grow as much. My husband wanted beans, so we'll have that. This is where I keep the nursery. So I still have all of the plants that need to come back from my dad's greenhouse. Those are all the succulents. And I'm gonna be using them in all different arrangements. And this is a cute little project that I worked on. This was my fountain. And you might have seen it in a couple of other videos looking pretty shabby and falling apart so I spray painted it two tones one with a copper and one with a blue and I wanted the blue to make it look like it was like an aged look so in there I'm going to be putting some succulents as well and I'm just gonna have my husband drill a hole in the bottom one so that it drains out the um, it was a fountain at one point and some of the other little upper pieces actually have holes in them so uh, it can't function as a fountain anymore. I have another clematis here and I need to cut back all of these trees. And just coming back to the front one more time, you can see how beautiful these white bleeding hearts are. I have some dying trees and I need to deal with them and I will. And then just ending here at the final view. And I just wanted to make sure that you got the final view here from the deck. It's really quite beautiful. I've also painted all of the white furniture as well. And let me just show you the fountain area. So the fountain area, I've used the baby tut grass again. And I have a Vista bubblegum petunia in the middle, as well as some geraniums. And then over here, I have the herb tower set up and I have lettuces in it this year. And the lettuces are different colors. You can see that dark color, that's the lettuce. And I have some succulents in those white pots. I have all of the hanging baskets set up. Look at that with those gates. It's just, uh, we were, my husband and I were joking about, oh, look, it's another focal point. And it's just, there's so many focal points, so many things to look at and appreciate and to be grateful for. Uh, down here, I actually have some ranunculus, which is a stunning flower, but I'm not having a lot of success growing it. I've got some in the ground and some in these pots just to see what will happen so far. Uh, I've had the green, I've had things dry back, it's been a cold spring so I'm not really sure. I probably would just buy them as cut flowers and wouldn't try to grow them one more time. And then in this particular pot I have a sun arrangement on the top and a more shady arrangement on the back. I kept some of the branches from the magnolia because they're just such an interesting architectural piece and I do have all the lights in the arrangements because in the evening that's how we light up the deck it's beautiful I have still some more herbs to plant up and I have a pot of different colors of sages and then different color 
kinds of basil and then all of the these are more hens and chicks so they can overwinter these pots overwintered in my garage and the reason I do that is then I don't have to take everything out and replant them so they turn out pretty good I'm gonna spin this camera around one more time and I do apologize for that give you a view of the trees it's so beautiful I wish you could smell it it's so fragrant here right now and there's still just a wee little bit of the forsythia you can see that it's it's just finished and this is when we'll trim it back but look at this I come and I sit here every day for my coffee there's so many places to sit and I sit on the stair because when you look at this view right here it allows you to turn your head just a little bit so you can see how beautiful all the pots are and the red bud and when the magnolia was blooming it was stunning and right now I can see both the apple tree and the purple sand cherry and I can see the dogwood that's about to bloom and I can see the crab apple and all of the tulips that are in bloom right now so it is really a beautiful place to just sit and to take it all in I'm very grateful for you following me and I'm very grateful for this garden and the peace and the joy that it brings me and to others it has become really a sanctuary for birds and bees and moths and butterflies it's just spectacular the amount of species that come and visit every day and we were reading recently that it's really almost a civic duty that you do when you create urban spaces like this that species can come and thrive in. So I thank you very much for coming and visiting here in the garden and I wish you much joy in the garden this summer and if it's your winter much planning and joy as you think about the seasons to come. Take care everyone.